Mic check, mic check. So the elder went to Numbers 1 and 18. So are you familiar? So you're a Muslim, brother. Yeah. Are you familiar with the origins of Islam? Yeah. When did it start? And how did it come to be? That was a very big, deep question. Yes, sir. That I've been asked before. Uh-huh. I just had to get you guys a little bit of a all right. Well, well, uh, but we're not we're not Christianity. Okay, just just so you know, um, we are believers of the one and true God, Yahweh. One second, we find that book real quick. So, have you have you ever heard this book from Babylon to Timbuktu? I have not. Okay, so this is this is a historian by the name of Rudolph R. Windsor, one of our people, and. Give me uh, page 45. Let's start at page 45. And then we get back to Jeremiah, the third chapter. Jeremiah, the third chapter. Look at that folly. See that? Yeah, yeah. So what we out here to do, brother, we out here to teach the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans who they truly are, where we come from, and our biblical heritage. Now, we have been disassociated with the word of God because we've been taken captive in various captivities throughout the history of time. And as a result, we adopted religions. God told us that this would happen to us. The Most High God told us that we would start following the Kaaba stone, that we would start following the cross, that we would start following all these different various religions. Let's get Jeremiah the third chapter. Just real quick before before you read that, because I want to give you some history on Islam. Because what you're going to find out, brother, is that you go back to a greater people before Islam even came to be. Go ahead, bring that up. We have a lot of our family and our brothers in the world that. That, that came from Islam and they found out the truth of who they really go back to and what we're really supposed to be observing and serving. Go ahead, yeah, Jeremiah, you're going to talk. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? So this is Jeremiah chapter 3, starting at verse 1 right here. God is speaking to the children of Israel and he says, if a man put away his wife, and now wife goes with another man. Is she now defiled? She, can she return? That woman is now polluted, right? Are you married? Okay, do you understand the concept of adultery, though? If, if a woman goes cheats on her husband, that woman is now defiled or polluted. Would you agree with that, brother? Uh, Would you want your wife cheating on you? Let's just ask that. No, well, that doesn't... For me, it's more so about the personal relationship between uh, Jesus, right? Well, what was Jesus' religion? He didn't serve a religion. He came back, what would he call us? The perfect son of God, right? He was a servant of the, the Most High God, absolutely. Just like we are. Right. Yep. That's what the term was for me. I know, I know it means to be a servant of God. We, I know that. I know that. I know you know. Okay. Yeah. So, Hopefully. I do. I do. Um, but what you're going to find out, Islam is very reminiscent to what we teach, but there are some critical errors in there as well. So just bear with us for a minute, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just, just bear with us. Just bear with us, brother. Just bear with us. Y'all going from the Bible, comparing the Bible, it has contradictions. Different divisions. You'd have to show me that. And there's contradictions. You'd have to show me that, first of all. First and foremost, I've heard that, but there's misconceptions in there. Yeah, there's misconceptions. 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 Yeah, there's no, he's the son of God. The son of God. No, there's the most high. There's only one true living God. Okay. I told you we're not Christianity, brother. That, that, that's, a, that's a critical error in Christianity. They teach that Christ is God. That's not, that's not. Well, because this Bible was written to us and for us. And the people that use it against us, they twisted the narrative to make us think that Christ is God. He was a white man. That the people of the book are white, all that. That's not that couldn't be further from the truth, brother. The people of this book were black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. God Himself is a black melanated, so-called black. We say so-called because black is a color that they have placed on us. But the Bible tells us that woolly hair, dark skin, just like Christ. Woolly hair, dark skin, Moses was a so-called black man. Daniel, all the way back. That's God's creation. That's God's God. creation. I know, I know. But God Himself, the Bible tells us what God looks like too, though. So I'm, I'm just bear with us, brother. Just bear with us. We appreciate you coming up and talking. God, the, the most high says you No, no, no. Let me say it like this. Christianity took this book and made a religion out of it. 
That's what they did. This this Bible has always been here. Even Islam believes in the laws of Moses. Where's the laws of Moses at in the Bible? The word the, exactly. But you are. You probably don't understand that right now clearly. But you're gonna find out if you bear with us that we are the real Israelites, not those people in Israel today. Okay. Being an Israelite was being a person. But how is that different between a person of God? When it's supposed to be a simple religion between a person of God. No favoritism involved. Okay, so we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get, we'll get to that. It's not an Israelite and a person serving God that is an Israelite. What's the difference? So that's that's a good question. So let, let me, no, 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 no. I want to know what the difference no, no. is. Okay, good, good, good. Let us get to that. So I, I still want to deal with what I'm bringing out right now, and then I'll answer that question because I want to deal in order. Because if we start asking too many questions, we'll get we'll lose track of where we were at. No, we don't answer that question, brother. Just hold that back. All right, give me Deuteronomy seven six. Give me Deuteronomy seven six. I'll answer the question first. I'll answer that question first, but I want—I don't want to get beside the point on the origins of Islam and where it came from and whatnot. So, give me Deuteronomy seven six to start out with. You then give me Leviticus twenty and twenty six. I'll answer that question real quick. Deuteronomy chapter seven and verse six. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. You know what the word holy means? This is the laws of Moses. This is this is this is the book of Deuteronomy, which Islam observes. Did Jesus undo the laws of Moses and did two great No, he did not. No, he did not. That's another lie for Christianity, brother. Let me show you. So, you want me to deal with that, or you want me to still answer that first question? You guys don't deal with Jesus at all. We deal with Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Jesus is a Greek enunciation, pronunciation. The, the, the Son of God? Yes, absolutely. He is not God, though. Did he get two great commandments? Yes or no? Let's get it. Hold where you're at. Or drop that for a second. Matthew 22, verse 37. I'm going I'm to I'm bring out what you're quoting, and then we'll deal with it. Well, bear with us, but like, that's like three things real quick. Let, let, us, let us deal with it, answer it efficiently, then we can move on. Fair? Okay, all right, all right. Well, you got to let me get with the first one, the second one, and now the third one, brother. Uh, Matthew 22, 37. Matthew uh, 22, verse 37. Yahweh Shai said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, right. with all thy soul, with right. all thy mind. So this is, he says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind, right? Go ahead. This is the first and great commandment. This is the first and great commandment, right? And the second is like unto it. And the second, these are the two that you're talking about. Go ahead. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. On these two commandments hang on all the law Do what and now? the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Hang all the law and the prophets. Yes, sir. Right, so yes, sir. From 10 to 2. Yes. So, no. You have to hear what he's saying. It hangs all the law, not saying it's done away with. It says it summarizes all the law in two. Let me give you an example. When God says to love thy neighbor as thyself, what does that mean? What do you think that means? Which means what, though? Don't and how do we know what that means to harm one? How do we how do we have a moral compass on how to understand or a format to go off of? We can't just make up things in our head saying the golden rule, right? So let's see. Let's. That's reaping and sowing. That's called reaping and sowing. That's where this is absurd. This is reality. You wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want your wife to cheat on you. Right. So why would you know? But what is that? What is that called, though? What is that called if my wife cheated on me? That's adultery. Adultery. That's not doing all to others. So what is that from, though? Where, where is adultery found? Where is that found in the Bible? Or in uh, Islam? Let's say, let's say in Islam, even. Adultery? Before it was written, it was already written. So the written word of the written word of God gives us rules, commandments, laws, statutes, judgments. So when God says all the law hangs on these two, so if I love my neighbor, what does that mean? I'm not going to steal from him. So how do I know to love you? Well, God says thou shall not steal. How do I know to love God? He says thou shall have no other God before me. Okay, To not take his name in vain, to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. To wear fringes, right? So on and so forth. So that's why he said here, this is the words of Yahweh He said, if you love God and you love your neighbor, on these two encompass the entire law. 
So if you love God, you're going to keep all the laws that pertain to him. If you love your neighbor, you're going to keep all the laws that pertain to him. You're not going to sleep with his wife. You're not going to steal from him, lie to him. So it's not two. It's a summarization. Does that make sense? Of course it is, but Not just ten. Six hundred thirteen. Before that, it was two different types, right? Broke. Right? And then you came back and you No, God gave the law. God, give me, give me Psalm sixteen eleven. God, God gave the word of God. First of all, God, Psalm sixteen eleven. No, you said the Jews, you said that, that God gave 10 and the Jews. Let me show you, brother. Let me show you. Psalm 68, verse 11. The Lord gave the word. The Lord gave the word, brother. Great, Go ahead. Great was the company of those that published. But he chose prophets throughout time. Isaiah, Moses, Elisha, Elijah. They were Israelites. They were Israelites. So they're Jews. When you talk about Jews, you have to go back to the history of King David and Solomon. There was a divide... So during the time of King David, there was a divide between Israel, and it became two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. You can, you can look this up in history, or you can find this in the Bible particularly. So God said, when the southern kingdom became its own kingdom, those are now referenced as the Jew, the southern kingdom of Israel, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. The word Jew comes from the word Judah, which is the southern kingdom. Then you had the other tribes which are like Neptality, Neptali, Gad, uh, Asher, Zebulon. You know, these are the northern kingdom tribes. They fell off from one another for many centuries, even to this present day. So now today, we're coming out to bring our people back together on one stick, as the Bible tells us. When I say one stick, meaning on one accord, because we lost our way as a people. So when you, when you reference Jew, it's just referencing the southern kingdom of Israel. Right. But when you reference the name Israel, that encompasses all 12 tribes. So now, Psalm 68 and 11, read that one more time, and then I want to read a little bit out there for the brother. Psalm 68 and 11. The Lord gave the word. Uh -huh. Great was the company of those that published it. So that's how he ordained it to be. God gave the word, and he selected prophets to distribute his word throughout history. You understand that, right, brother? Okay, all praises to Mosiah. So let's get let's get that real quick. And uh, this is from Babylon and Timbuktu. This is a historian by the name of Rudolph R. Windsor. Um, and give me Exodus chapter two, verse twenty-four. Uh, the date on it. When was it written? That's what you asked. Uh, let's see if it has a date in here. Right here. Nineteen seventies. Or it might be in the back too. I yeah. talked about it in the back. It was written in. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. No, that's the. Uh, let's see. 1969. So this Rudolph Farm Windsor, 1969, hardback. Second printing, yeah, so 1969. Looks like this was uh, published in 1969. So yeah, this is this is the brother right here. That's the brother that, he's a historian who uh, documented this history, you know, and whatnot. So start at uh, page 45 and read down. So, page 45. Uh, no, no, that's, that's dealing with the, the Roman siege and whatnot. That's Tom, Titus and Bass Page. That's during the Roman Empire. Yep, start, just start reading down. Right, so what you going to find out, brother, and then Exodus 2, verse 24. This is the book uh, titled From Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolph R. Windsor. Um, this is page 45, uh, beginning at the middle paragraph, starting with the word when. When Muhammad was born, many Arabs were still worshiping the sun. Right, because during the time of Islam, when Islam became a religion, prior to that, the Arabs worshipped 360 gods, one god per day. Go ahead. Where, and how, why does it say 360? Because the biblical year in the Bible, there's 360 years or days pertaining to a biblical year. But the Roman Empire, the Gregorian calendar, 
they started the uh, 365 day calendar. But according to the Bible, where Muhammad got it from, 360 days is an actual year. Go ahead. Just listen, just watch, brother. Just watch, brother. Just listen for a minute. You're going to find out he learned from the Jews in Yathrib. So, in 610 AD, it's the truth. Hey, do your first, do your history on it, brother. Uh, Go ahead. Started back from the top. When Muhammad was born, many Arabs were still worshiping the sun. Brother, brother, this is a historian though, and that this ain't the only source we got. Just keep reading. You need to read your read your Quran and see what it talks about the children of Israel, and you're gonna find out that he did learn from Israel. Go ahead. When Muhammad was born, many I'll pull, Arabs, up, I'll pull up the sources right now for you. Go ahead, King. When Muhammad was born, many Arabs were still worshiping the sun, stars, spirits, and idols. Right. The Arabs possessed 360 idols, one for each day of the year. Right. Muhammad was born A.D. 570. Right. So that's when Muhammad was born, 570 A.D. And anything that, that you question, fact check it and just do your research on it. Go ahead. Four years after the death of Emperor Just Justinian. Justinian, right, go ahead. He was descended from the tribe of Koresh. Right, from Koresh, keep reading. And the family of Hashem. Mm -hmm. His his mentality was Salaki, what is this word here, King? Prodi prodigious. Prodigious. So his mentality mentality was prodigious. In his youth, he was never taught to read or write. And you do, you are aware that Muhammad was illiterate, right? Are you familiar with that history? You think I'm lying? Google, Google right now. Google right now. Okay. All right. I, I, I don't know what you know, brother. I don't know what you know. That's why I'm asking you. I just met you right now, brother. Okay, just, just bear with us for five more minutes. I gotta go. Okay. I appreciate it. I got All right. All right. Well, know this. The so-called black and slang and Native Americans, we are the children of Israel, brother. Hey, you know. But it's keep not, reading. I, I want to, for, for edification purposes, just keep reading. His mentality was prodigious. Uh, in his youth, he was never taught to read or write, but his imagination was superlative. Super. Superlative. Superlative. Or superlative. Uh -huh. I mean, he had a he had a he had a, a imagination that was just like he he thought really. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, vivid. Um, vivid. Yeah, he had a vivid imagination. That's a good word. Go ahead. Okay. Come on. Uh, Muhammad was an extraordinarily handsome man, right? And eloquent in motivating men with the power of words. Even though he was illiterate, which he was. Even that man just attest test yeah, to that that he knew yeah, he was a veteran. Yeah, yeah. um, but yeah, he didn't want to leave when he got to yeah, that. I know. He didn't want to hear no more. But he had a way of words. He had the gift of gab, mm -hmm. the gift of deception. Let's just be clear. He had the gift of deception and a way of motivating people. And he looked handsome. He was a good orator. Yeah, yeah. he was a good orator. That's right. So he knew how to speak to people to, to convince them, to persuade them. Go ahead. In the early years of Muhammad's life, he passed his time as a shepherd boy. Right. We must remember that many su successful men have arisen from insignificant and humble conditions. A lot of people who start out in rough, rough growing up, like rough beginnings, a lot of people who, who start out that way um, end up succeeding later in life because they've been through hard experiences and they know how to deal with those experiences accordingly. Go ahead. Watching the sun by day and the stars by night left opportunity for Muhammad to contemplate in solitude and reflect on the events and profundities of this world. So you gotta remember the Arabs, they worship 360 gods, particularly the sun god. This is what they like to worship. So, of course, Muhammad was watching the sun and the stars at this time. Keep reading. Uh, after Muhammad became a camel driver, he traveled to remote and, and intriguing lands. He led his caravans to Persia, Syria, and Egypt. So, he, he liked to travel, okay? He, he, he went all around the region and uh, started dealing with people. Go ahead. Transacting business with merchants of every kind. Right. 
on his business trips, he met Jews. He met what? He met Jews. He met Jews. Now, this is something that the brother didn't want to deal with. He knew that we were probably going to address this in a second. That's why he got up out of there. But that's the mind of Islam. It, it, it's a it's a heavy spirit on our people. And it's, it's, it's a tough one to break. But they can't come out of it if they will just listen, if they give us their time. Go ahead. Jews... Christians and members of other sects. Now, notice how it says Jews and Christians. Why does it say that? Because Islam is relatively a new religion. Okay? Christianity had already arose in the Catholic Empire. And of course, Jews were already around because they are the chosen lineage of God. They've always been around. Go ahead. He interrogated them concerning the tenets of their religion. So he started interrogating the Jews and the and people of Christianity. He started to observe what they were doing, asking them questions. Go ahead. He frequented the environment of the Jews. Of the what? Of the Jews. So he was always around them. When it says he frequented, it means that he was always around them. Hanging he out. wanted to hang out around the Jews. Go ahead. And their rabbis. Uh -huh, their teachers, right? Mostly because they were merchants and an omnipresent ethnic group. Right, they were they were around. They were all over the place. That's what it's saying during this time. Go ahead. Because he could not read or write. He couldn't read or write. He could not read or write. Go ahead. His ears were attentive and keen to everything that the Jews related to him. All the words that the Jews were relating to him. Interesting. Keep reading. Mohammed learned and ex extracted much from the Jewish religion. From what now? Much from the Jewish religion. From the Jewish religion. Now, we don't observe a religion, but historians and scholarship are going to identify it as religion. So, Muhammad learned his understanding from observing our people, the Israelites, and how they conducted themselves from the word of God, the Torah, or the Tawarah. Keep reading. And compounded it with his new religion. So what did he do? His new religion. He conflated it. Now watch this, just real quick. Give me Romans chapter 10 from the top. Romans chapter 10 from the top. Oh, where you're at, King? Romans 10, verse 1. Brother, in my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. Is that Israel might be saved. This is our heart's desire is that Israel might be saved. Go ahead. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh. They have a zeal of God. But not according to knowledge. But not according to knowledge. This is... Thy brother and all these other brothers walk around with these religions, they have, a, they have a zeal of God, but it's not according to knowledge, right? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. They're being ignorant of God's word, of God's righteousness. And going about to establish their own righteousness. What do they do? Establish, establish their, their own, own righteousness, righteousness. Right? Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. Read that again, Ark. This is the book from Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Rinser, page 45, started at, started at the bottom uh, portion. He frequented the environment of the Jews and their rabbis, mostly because they were merchants and an omnipresent ethnic group. Because he could not read or write, his ears were attentive and keen to everything that the Jews related to him. Muhammad learned and extracted much from the religion, much from the Jewish religion, and compounded it with his new religion, Islam. You see that, and that's what our people do. That's exactly what Muhammad did. So when our people follow Muhammad and his religion, they're establishing their own righteousness, God. not submitting to the righteousness of Yahweh. Uh, that's what any of our people that are in Islam, they're they're following a new religion. That is blended with the truth in lies. The best way to deceive someone is to throw a little bit of the truth in there and distort it, mix it with lies and deception. Keep reading. I'll go to the next page. Page forty-six. Wherever it's highlighted, just get just get the highlighted parts because I just want to address a couple of those parts. Page forty-six. He was immersed deeply in the deplorable conditions of his people. 
and he wanted to lead them away from moral tur turpitude. So you, you, uh, Muhammad was looking at the conditions of the Arabs and he wanted to make a change. So he said, I got to do something about this. Go ahead. Turpitude and idolatry, it seemed to him that the angel Gabriel appeared commissioning him to articulate a new religion. So notice what it says. Muhammad attests or claims that the angel Gabriel came to him. Now that's interesting. Give me Amos 3 and 7. The whole where you're at. Huh. He claims that the angel Gabriel came to him. Well, let's see if that's if that's how God operates. Amos 3 verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So God will do nothing except he reveals his servants to uh, uh, to his servants, the prophets. Well, who is that? Jump back to Amos 2 and 11. Let's see who God reveals anything to. Uh, Amos 2 verse 11. And I raise up of your sons for prophets and of your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel? You see that? The children of Israel. So when Muhammad, an Arab, claims that the angel Gabriel came to him, that's a flat-out lie. God. That's a flat-out lie because God himself says he's not going to reveal nothing unless he reveals it to his servants, the prophets, which are the Israelites. Show me one other person in history that wasn't an Israelite that God revealed uh, some secrets to, some God. wisdom to. It didn't happen. Muhammad is just claiming that because he understood the Bible for what it said when he learned it from the Jews that Gabriel was coming to the Israelites. So he utilized that information to his advantage to make himself a prestigious uh, prominence in the eyes of his people. He did it. And he did it. And today, like the Bible said, you shall serve wood and stone. God. That you don't want to serve the one and true living God, now you're going to serve these pagan religions. God allowed that to happen as a curse upon our people. Keep reading, y'all. Uh, uh. Incredibly, Gabriel was the same angel who appeared in a vision to the Hebrew prophet Daniel. You see that? To the Hebrew prophet Daniel. And he appeared to Mary and Joseph. Go ahead. Salakia. The text says, incidentally. So that's correction. Incidentally, Gabriel was the same angel who appeared in a vision to the Hebrew prophet Daniel. So in other words, ironically... Muhammad is saying it's the same angel that came to Daniel, that came to Mary and Joseph. He's saying it's the same angel that came to him. Now, mind you this, this is 600 years after the death of Hamashiach, roughly. You don't think he understood and knew this history? We just read that he observed the Christians and the Jews, so Christianity was already a religion. He was familiar with the story of Gabriel and how Gabriel came to deliver a message. Go ahead. Muhammad gradually came to believe that he was a prophet. He, in his mind, smitten with madness, He's came to off. believe. Came to believe. Hey, man, keep it moving, man. Devil, keep it moving. Go ahead. Keep it moving, devil. Keep it moving, devil. You can't go to slavery. Don't worry about him. All right. You're going into slavery, so. Muhammad gradually came to believe that he was a prophet and expounded his religion to members of his family. Read that again. Okay, we're going to repeat this. Hey, why don't you just get up the block, all right? Thank you. All right, so back to the book. Muhammad gradually came to believe that he was a prophet and expounded his religion to members of his family. You see that? So Muhammad thought to himself that he was a prophet. He he attests and claimed that the angel Gabriel came to him and spoke to him. So at that point, he says, now I'm a prophet. Now I'm going to lead this people. Go ahead. Uh, he went out to the holy temple to preach to the multitudes that gathered to worship the idols. Now remember, he had a way with words. Remember, he was he he was eloquent in his words. He knew how to he had the gift of gab, knew how to speak to people. Go ahead. With these words, the first phase of the Islamic revolution began. Mm -hmm. La ilaha illa Allah. So this is when Islam is now starting. This is the, the revolution of Islam. Go ahead. Muhammad Rasul Allah. 
There is no God but Allah. So now this is where they get to Allah. Interesting, because the Hebrew way of saying God is Elohim. Uh, you don't think he took that from our people and just God. twisted the narrative? That's exactly what he did. God. Allah, Elohim, they just put their own little twist and spin on it. Go ahead. God. And Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. And he said he is the prophet. Interesting, because we have a savior. We have the one and true living son of God, God. which is Hamashiach Yahawashai. So he put himself in that place, wow. essentially, in the eyes of his own people. Remember, he learned everything from the Jews. He reading? Wow. The original black Jews. Incidentally, by this time, the Hebrew Old Testament had been translated into Arabic. Now the Hebrew Old Testament had been translated into Arabic. Why? Because our people were intertwined with all these nations. The Bible already told us that we would be scattered into all nations. All these nations had their foot on our neck. Go ahead. And the Arabs were rapturous. And the Arabs were rapturously pleased to read about their great ancestors in the story of the Hebrew patriarchs. Talking about who? Ishmael. So where do they learn about their history? In the Bible. God. They understood who they were because their history is in the Bible. Go ahead. This fact alone helped Muhammad to inspire in the Arabs the feeling of nationalism and racial pride. See that so they, they felt like they had a, a nationalism, like it says. When they found about Ishmael and how he became a great people, Okay, speaking of themselves, they, they, they began to get a great sense of pride about themselves. Go ahead. Because they had read in the Hebrew scripture that Ishmael was to become a great nation. So they took this and they ran with it. When the Muslims sing this, oh, Ishmael, 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 they missed one part, that he is the children of the flesh, not the children of the promise or the covenant. Jump down, Ron. There were many influential Jews in Yathrib. In Yathrib, right? Who were allies with the other Arabs. Right, which were, they were cool at the time. At this time, they were cool at this moment in history. Go ahead. These Jews had introduced the conception of one God. This is how Muhammad learned that there's one true God. Remember, the Arabs worshiped 360 gods until they learned from the Jews that there was one God, monotheism. The belief of one, one true God. Okay, go ahead. Moreover, the Arabs were somewhat tolerant of the Jews. But they started to get a little irritable. You got to remember, they started to feel a sense of pride and nationalism because they learned that they, according to the Hebrew text, that they were going to be a great nation of people. Put to the next page, King. Uh, okay, so I can get, uh, so. Okay, Arabs were somewhat tolerant of the Jews. Uh, on a pilgrimage to the temple in Mecca, some of the Yathrib's best citizens had been converted by the teachings of Muhammad when he lived in Mecca. So here it is. Now in Mecca, uh, Muhammad is now converting the, the inhabitants of Yathrib and the surrounding regions. Now Islam is becoming a movement. Go ahead. Finally, the pilgrims returned to Yathrib and dis and disseminated God and disseminated their new religion. Meaning, they they started to mix it in with everybody else. That's what that means to disseminate. Meaning, they they started to intertwine their religion amongst the crowds of people. Go ahead. These converts could readily accept Islam because they were influenced to a great extent by the concept of the one God of the Jews. So once again, where did they learn this from? From our people, go ahead. Eventually, Muhammad was proclaimed ruler of the city, and in his honor, the name of Yathrib was changed to Medina. To Medina, now, just, just finish this out, this page, this, and then we're gonna close it out. Islam and Judaism. The prophet Muhammad adopted many principles and laws from the Jewish religion. That's why 
let all this noise pass. Like it just got real loud. Um, read that last part again, King. Islam and Judaism. The Prophet Muhammad adopted many principles and laws from the Jewish religion. From the Jewish religion. This is why when you when you observe Islam, they're very reminiscent to the ways of the Hebrews. Meaning what? They observe the Sabbath day, but they twist the narrative a little bit. They do it on Friday instead of Saturday. Okay? They don't eat pork unless they're in a in dire straits. They will allow it. Okay? They tell their women to dress modestly. They do. They pray five times a day. They get that from us because the Bible says to pray morning, afternoon, and evening. They observe these things from us. They get the Day of Atonement. They call it Ramadan. Okay. They they take our laws that God gave us and they apply it to themselves, but they twist it a bit. We're supposed to make. Uh, pray towards the east. They pray towards the east, but they pray towards Mecca. When the Lord says to pray towards Jerusalem, Jerusalem. they get all this from us. God. You reading? The Jewish confession of the unity of God is Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Ehad. So this is what they say, but in the Hebrew. We say we say the Shema, Shema Yasharallah, Yahweh Elahai Nawa, Yahweh Achad, which means Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Where did they get that from? From us. Go ahead. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Right. The Mohammedan slogan is as follows: La Ila Ila Allah Muhammad Rasul Allah. There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. You see that? They, they straight up stole it from the Bible. Straight up stole it from the true and living God's word. Go ahead. Muhammad adopted also the main details of the Jewish calendar. Right. The Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement. The Sabbath. The Sabbath. Much of the Bible and narratives from the madrash and many points of the ritual law right incidentally the jews prayed three times a day facing the city of jerusalem right and the muslims true believers pray five times a day facing the city of mecca so this is what the muslims do they they copy what the jews was was doing he learned from the jews he reading Trying his best, Muhammad sought to convert the Jews to his new religion. So he tried to compel the Jews and convert the Jews to follow his new religion. I can't stress that enough. Ah, his new his religion. A man. A man. That's what people are following. Amen. They're not following God. When they, but he has compelled millions of people to present day to their destruction. Go ahead. Muhammad sought to convert the Jews to his new religion, but to no avail. The Jews were adamant and resistant to change. Just like we're doing now. We're being uh, adamant to stand on the rock, which is uh, Hamashiach Yahawashai, the foundation that we have to be built upon. God. Go ahead. The high esteem which the prophet held for the Jews was transformed to enmity. Uh -huh. And another thing, now that I said that, they also worship a rock. Uh, we worship the rock, which is Hamashiach uh, Yahawashai. The Lord our God is our rock, but then they worship a black stone called the Kaaba stone. Uh, Interesting. Uh, Everything that they took from us and they twisted the narrative a bit. Remember, I told you, I said it earlier, the best way to hide a lie is to throw a little troop in there uh, and then mix it in with deception. Go ahead. The highest thing which the prophet held for the Jews was transformed to enmity. And instead of allies, he looked upon them as competitors. As competitors. So now here it is. Now that Muhammad is getting some steam, he's getting a large following, and Islam is now spreading abroad. Now he's starting to turn on the Jews, the very people he learned from and obtained his information and understanding. Now he's twisting the narrative and now having an evil eye towards our people. Go ahead. Muhammad needed the confirmation of the influential Jews to validate his mission. Right? As all upstarts need the backing of someone influential. Right? Muhammad therefore turned against the Jews. He did what now? Turned against the Jews and became their 
tormentor. And became our tormentor. So keep that in mind, brothers and sisters. When you want to follow the religion of Islam, because that is a religion. We don't, we're not a religion. It's our heritage. It's our culture. It's who we are. Okay? It's the covenant that we came into with the Father. That's the difference. But if you want to follow the religion of Islam, you are following a religion where the origins of it was to turn on your people, slaughter your people, oppress your people, enslave your people, and turn you away from the true and living God. So what do we have to do in these last days? Acts 3.19. We're going to close out. You can get Matthew 26, Kings. Uh, read that down for our We're closing now. God. I just wanted to bring out some of that history on 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 Islam. Interesting, interesting day. All these people come up with Islam today. Yeah, yeah, it's like four, four, four people. They they must be feeling a little juice in their system right now with the war going on. Yeah, they want to debate their cause now, I guess. And then run. They're not debating. They're coming up with preconceived notions just to run. They know they're holding on to the words of a man. Yeah. Or yeah. be reminded that they were. Exactly. Yeah, Acts 3 19. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So we got to turn from that madness. Islam is madness. Christianity is madness. Hinduism is madness. Atheism is madness. Mormonism is madness. All these vain religions are madness. Okay? And the Lord said, You will be stricken with madness if you don't want to serve Him. So come back to serving the true and living God. Repent and convert. Change. Go ahead. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You see that? Because when the black Messiah, so-called, when he returns, he's not coming back from Muslims. He's coming back to judge Muslims. He's coming back to judge people in Christianity. Coming back to judge people who want to follow Buddhism. He's coming back to find his church. A church without spot or blemish. Okay? Those who are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay? And the faith in Hamashiach Yahweh That's what we got to do. So if you want to follow a black stone, a Kaaba stone, or a wooden cross, you got judgment coming. So repent and convert while you have time. And with that, let's grab, let's, let's grab our closing scripture. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 26, starting at verse 6. Now, when Yahawashai was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Yahawashai understood it, he said unto them, why trouble ye the woman? For she hath brought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. And with that, we like to give all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh, Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Quran Yashirala, Quran Yashirala, Quran Yashirala.